What will be the solution to bring harmony regardless of uh, race, religion, and ethnicity, particularly I am referring to Rakhine and Rohingya? You know, Jima Dane Patelu solution, can I have your body? Jima Roha, let me judge a patient I may be a scenario, but my patient I may. The Lumio Ye Bada Ye Badi Bekamia. လူမျိုးရေးဘာသာရေးပြဿနာများဆိုတော့နေကျင်းညာကျင်ဖြည့်ရှင်းနိုင်ထားမဟုတ်ဘူးဘာဆိုတော့အဲ့ဒီဟာ
to see if it is in line with international norms. That is what rule of law means, and it's not an exciting answer that I'm giving you. Well, people who are now very aware of what is happening with the ethnic minorities in your country. Well, first of all, as I said, I have not been silent. It's just that they're not hearing what they want to hear from me. But I cannot doctor my answers to please everybody. I have to say what I believe in. And I believe that rule of law is the first step towards any kind of solution to the problem in the Rakhine state and other parts of this country. And of course, that's not an exciting answer. So people would rather think that I was not saying anything than that I was saying something so boring that they'd rather not hear. My question is, who are the Rohingya in the Myanmar, and why are they being persecuted by the government of Myanmar? I think you should not use emotive words like persecution, because what had happened in uh, the Rakhine was violence, communal violence, and there were crimes commit committed by both communities. And when you focus on what one community suffers, then you create further hatred. I think we should look at it as coolly as possible. The first thing to do to diffuse the situation there is to think of it from the point of view of rule of law. And this is where your question, who are they, comes in. We have to look at it from the point of view of rule of law in three different ways. First of all, uh, rule of law in the sense of handling crimes as they should be handled. That is to say, when a crime is committed, action must be taken in accordance with the, with the fact that justice must not only be done, but seen to be done. If, this had been, if, if such action had been taken place uh, in the case of the first crime that set off a whole series of communal violence, then I think we would not be in the situation we are today. Now that is the first requirement of rule of law. But rule of law must always be linked to human rights. Everybody's human rights, as I said earlier, must be sacrosanct. And rule of law must protect everybody and their human rights. And then there is rule of law with regard to citizenship. We have citizenship laws in Burma. And everybody in Burma must have the rights of a citizen in line with the citizenship laws. But we should go a step further and examine whether our citizenship, citizenship laws are in line with international standards. That is the second step. And the third aspect of rule of law, which I think would help the situation, is to make sure that there are no illegal crossings of the border. This has added to the problems. Bangladesh claims that many Muslims come over from Burma and they do not really belong to Bangladesh. And Burma claims that a lot of Muslims who are now in Burma are actually people who have come over illegally from Bangladesh. It is very difficult to prove whether such as assertions are right or wrong because the border is so porous and so badly policed. So if we could take simple rule of law steps to contain the situation, then we can go on to the next stage of diffusing the tension and bringing harmony among, between the two communities. It's not going to be something that you can do overnight. Communal tensions have existed for decades, for decades. They erupted recently because of one crime that was committed and not handled properly. It focused on all the problems that have, had been existing between the communities over the last well, decades, but it, it all came to a head. And the reason why I do not want to, to use accusative words is because I want people to just sit back and think of ways of resolving the problems than of accusing. Uh, accusations do not always diffuse pro problems. They do not always resolve problems. Sometimes the proper accusations should be made, but they should only be made after due examination of the evidence. What is important is that the government must take responsibility for any violence that takes place in the country, anything that happens that is contrary 
to the laws of the land. As I said earlier, I do not think that the government has taken enough responsibility with regard to that. Behind all these communal tensions are great fears and hatred. And to remove these, the government must create an atmosphere of security. If people do not feel secure, you will not be able to let, make them let go of their hatred and their fear. So I want our people to live in peace. We have not forgotten, I have not forgotten certainly, that we achieved our independence in 1948 through reconciliation between different ethnic nationalities with the with the involvement of different religious groups, with the involvement of different religious, uh, political organizations. It was through national solidarity that we achieved our independence. And I believe that it is only through national solidarity that we, we will be able to achieve true democracy for our country. So Australia and the rest of the world must try to help us to achieve this reconciliation. They must also remind the present government that it is responsible for peace and rule of law in our country. If they want us to be responsible, they'd better make us government.